Hello everyone, good morning. So today we'll begin with the Terraform. Like we have to do auto scaling on Kubernetes cluster. Once the uh, uh, Terraform is done, we'll be automating the cluster creation of EKS with Terraform and then we'll pick up the auto scaling. So for today, let's begin with Terraform. Terraform is a infrastructure as a core concept tool. What is meant by infrastructure as a core? Um, infrastructure as a code. Uh, see, we write, we know that like we write the code for developing an application, right? Similarly, we also write test cases for testing it. And uh, so if that is the case, like can we manage our infrastructure with the code? Can we look at the infrastructure in the form of code, which is called infrastructure as a code concept. Infrastructure meaning your uh, uh, clusters, your EC2 instances, all of them we are creating manually till now, right? If you remember in the Jenkins uh, file, we are pulling the code, compiling it, building it, deploying it, right? Uh, so this is how we are doing. But all of this is happening on EC2 instances, which we are creating manually and then using them, correct? So, but now automating that part as well, automating this, uh, this concept of creating the infrastructure with code is nothing but IAC, right? So like uh, DevOps teams write some code, you know, with the, like in Terraform, which will create the infrastructure. So thereby automating the infrastructure as well, infrastructure creation as well. So that's called uh, infrastructure as a code concept. We look at the infrastructure or we manage the infrastructure with code. So Terraform is one such tool which will automate the uh, manual steps also. It will not only help the creating infrastructure, it will also help you replicate the infrastructure. It will help you maintain multiple environments. These are all possible with Terraform. So let's see what it can do. So see, Terraform is a tool for building, changing and versioning infrastructure safely and efficiently. Terraform is open source and uses declarative language. Like it uses declarative language, we write Terraform code in HCL, HashiCorp language. Right, it's an open source and we write Terraform code using HCL. It uses infrastructure as a code concept and Terraform is written in HashiCorp language. So it's very easy to learn language. Uh, like any other language, it has different uh, uh, constructs which help us to manage our infrastructure much better. And um, there are also other tools like Ansible, which sounds and looks similar like Terraform, but there is some uh, difference, you, you can say. In Terraform is basically infrastructure provisioning tool. Means you provide infrastructure, you create the infrastructure with Terraform. Ansible is a configuration management tool. What does that mean? See, and configuration and management tool is, yes, you can create the infrastructure with Terraform, and Ansible will configure it. Means let's say, okay, infrastructure is there. You want to install some packages, maintain some uh, services and all. This part can be handled by Ansible. See, they can be used for vice versa also. Terraform can also be used to configure the infrastructure and Ansible can be used to provision it. They can be used vice versa also, but that's where their strength lies. Means Terraform is best for provisioning the infrastructure rather than configuring it. Ansible is best at configuring the infrastructure rather than provisioning it. So that's how the difference lies. But because uh, like their um, uh, their requirements or what they do overlaps, there might be a confusion over these tools, which tool to use, which tool uh, to use and when to use the tool. But this is the difference. So Ansible is more mature tool. Infrastructure is a new tool, like it was emerging now. Uh, and yeah, both uses the concept of infrastructure as code. We write the infrastructure or we configure the infrastructure in the form of code. So that's how they work. And Ansible is basically a product of Red Hat. Here we write Ansible code in YAML, which is again simple, which can be best suited for Man configuring your infrastructure. Infrastructure is already there. You want to maintain uh, the consistency in the configurations. You want to manage all these configurations you have Ansible for. So 
Then coming to the architecture, Terraform has got two components. One is core and the other one is provider. See, now we know that what Terraform does. Let's talk about the Terraform architecture, which is very simple, which help us to understand uh, the functionality of Terraform. It has got two components. One is core component and the other one is a provider. What is core and what is a provider? See, core as the name says, it's a main component of Terraform. Uh, the actual crux lies uh, in the core component and this core takes two inputs. One is Terraform config file written by Terraform users. Another one is a state file, right? Core takes two inputs, which is Terraform config file written by users, right? So where you will write like what, how you want your infrastructure, what type of instances you need or else like everything will be written here by the core component, right? I mean, sorry, everything is written in the configuration files, which is given as input to the core. And then state file. State file is automatically generated when you apply Terraform command. Okay. So whenever you write, you run the Terraform code, state file will be auto generated for the first time. State file is very important. It will have all sensitive data, complete information of the infrastructure you have. Right means state file can be considered as the actual state of the infrastructure. Whereas Terraform config, uh, config file tells you the desired state, means how you want your infrastructure to be, what should be present in your infrastructure. This kind of information will be present in the Terraform config file, means the Terraform code we write. State file is auto-generated when you run the Terraform code, which will have the actual state of the infrastructure. So those are the two inputs given to the core components means whenever you run Terraform code, uh, it is applied to the core component. Core will take these two inputs. Okay, once core takes these two inputs, it will calculate the difference. It will calculate what should be done. Means, okay, at, uh, desired state as per the config file, you say that you, you need two EC2 instances. So state will not have anything initially, state will be empty. So these two means core will create a plan. What are all things that are needed to create these two instances? Let's say there are, let's say it's a second time, two instances were there. State file is showing three instances. Means again, core will take these two inputs, compare them, and it will create a plan. Plan means they need only two, but they were three. It should destroy one. So it will create the plan. Plan is like you can imagine plan is like a document which will have all the steps that are to be done, right? That's a core component. Core component will create a plan by comparing Terraform config files and the state files. Once core creates the plan, okay, fine, it has created a plan that one instance should be created and all. Then, then it goes to the providers. There were something called providers. Providers are something which will help you implement this plan. Providers are like uh, programs, right? There were thousands of providers, like for AWS, there's one provider, for GCP, there's a provider, for Kubernetes, there's one more provider and so on. There were so many providers for each, uh, uh, like let's say for each platform. Provider is like a program or else a software which will help you interact with that particular API. It means AWS provider will help you interact with the AWS and it can give uh, control over all the resources in AWS. Means let's say in AWS we have 100 services. Provider give you uh, control or access to configure or provision all these uh, resources of AWS, right? So providers are very important. Let me show you the providers. And learning Terraform is very simple because you have a lot of a good documentation for Terraform. which helps you understand everything thoroughly. If you go to the official documentation, Terraform providers, right? Go to the official documentation, registry.terraform.com. If you just go here, see, here are so many providers available. Some are uh, managed by uh, HCL, the official providers, and some other partner providers you have. And if you go to see AWS provider, First, you have to install the provider. When you install Terraform, you don't get all the providers by default. We have to install it. 
So how do you install it? Here you can see how to use the provider. This is the code you need to use to install this provider. And there is a clean documentation, right? What this provider does. does. Use a AWS provider to interact with many resources supported by AWS. You must configure the provider with the proper credentials before you can use it. Right, you must configure, you must provide your AWS secret key and access key so that it can be used. And once you install the provider, it gives you access to so many resources. These are all called resources which correspond to services on AWS. You can automate all of them. Suppose you want to create an EC2 instance. Here you can see EC2 Compute Cloud and you will see something like EC AWS instance. See, this is called resource. What it does provides an EC2 instance. This allows instance to be created, updated, deleted. Right? So this is the code for it, which will create the instance. So yeah, providers basically help you to manage your infrastructure. Means to interact with a particular platform, this will help you. So that's what is a provider. And yeah, uh, you, you can use Terraform from your Windows, Linux, or Mac. It's compatible with all the operating systems. Means you can install Terraform on your laptop and spin up instance on AWS. That's perfectly possible. You need not just go to AWS. You should spin up instances from the AWS console. Till now, what we are doing, we are going to AWS console, opening it, then creating instance by following multiple steps. If you remember, we click on launch instance button choose the MI, choose the type and all. But here you can start your in infrastructure from the code. So once you install on your laptop, you can go with it. And yeah, all the Terraform code can be version controlled by Git, means you're also maintaining versions of your Terraform code. You can provision the infrastructure. Later on, if you want to update, you can modify your infrastructure. You can replicate the infrastructure and so on. Also, you can manage versions of your infrastructure. You are storing this code on Git means you are managing versions of it. So providers are a logical abstraction of an upstream API, like they are responsible for understanding the API interaction. Let's say you want to create an EC2 instance with Terraform, that's possible. And let's say you want to create an S3 bucket, RDS, all of them are possible with Terraform. Terraform has a vast number of providers like ACP, sorry, AWS, GCP, Azure, and so on. Each provider gives you access to hundreds of resources connect to provider AWS. And then comes resources, data sources, and so on. And these are some of the Terraform commands. Terraform state file output values will go through each of them one after the other. First, let us install Terraform. Any questions before we proceed? No, no ma'am install terraform right so we can install terraform here right here are all the commands how to install manually uh, from the binary or you on mac on windows on linux you have everything here we are choosing in windows if you are installing on windows you can go with a chocolatey package chocolatey is a free open source package management system for Windows. Like you have package managers on Linux, this is a package manager for Windows. You can use this, install this, and using Chocolate, you can install Terraform. As simple as that. There are multiple ways you can do this. It's very simple installing Terraform. You can use Chocolate, or else you can also install the other way. Let me show you the other way also. AWS CLI we have already installed, right? Let's launch the Git branch. Yeah. 
AWS CLI is already installed. Right, it means that AWS is, I mean, AWS CLI is configured hyphen version or but yeah it's showing verbose means it's installed okay that's how you check the version with double hyphen uh, so aws cli is installed now we can install terraform how to install it on linux we'll see later let's go with windows now mm. let's go to the official documentation uh, like official page yeah, the same one I have shown you. Mac, Windows, Linux, FreeBSD, Solaris, you can use, it means you can install anywhere. So just download the executable. This is another way to install. You may install it through chocolatey package or else you can also install this way. So just download it. I think I have it. Van system setting the environment variables, path variable, edit this. See, I have already installed Terraform and placed the Terraform here, downloads Terraform. So you have to add this path here. I don't remember actually the path, so I first check the things here. And then downloads. Just a second. So here is the folder, right? Just download it and extract it, that's all. And put that path in the path variable. Create a new path variable and put the path so that you can use Terraform from any location. So it is available already for me. I can just do Terraform. It will show you a lot of verbose means it's available. You can also check the version of Terraform this way, right? That's a version of Terraform. Terraform is installed, as simple as that. You just do, you know, download that file, extract it, means it will be a zip file extracted, and put that path of the extracted file in the path variable. So that will help you install Terraform. So once it is installed, yes, we can create some, we can write some Terraform code. Uh, for this, again, I'm going to use the VS Code Editor. Just created some empty folder here and open that folder in the VS Code editor. This is that this editor help you write code better. So launch the editor. So now we are all good to uh, write the Terraform code. Um, yeah. Before that, we need to uh, initially we need to first uh, configure the provider, right? So which provider you want? So let me create some Terraform files. Terraform files will be with extension dot tf like let's say i'm giving main dot tf so this is the symbol for terraform this is how your terraform file looks like okay so to configure some provider just now we have seen yeah let's say i just want to use see browse the providers aws provider i want to use this provider so just copy this 
and you need not write line by line from the scratch. Majority of the code can be picked up from here. See Terraform required providers is AWS and the source is HashiCorp AWS. Okay, so you can see here HashiCorp AWS version and all. So yeah, this will install the latest version of the Terraform provider. And here comes the configuration options like uh, uh, your account. You need to connect your account right by providing access key, secret key. All of that can be done. But first, let's run this. You can launch a terminal. I would choose the bash terminal. Okay, then Terraform in it. Terraform in it will help you. Uh, initialize the Terraform means what happens is when you run this, it will create this provider means uh, it will just uh, help you download this provider. Terraform doesn't come with uh, doesn't come automatically with all the providers. There were some hundreds of providers, right? If you just if it just comes with all the providers installed, it becomes too heavy. So it just comes with the uh, like uh, uh, only the provider, whatever you want, you can install it here. So let's run Terra for a minute. See, initializing the backend, initializing the provider plugins. It will download the plugins and it will create a file called uh, Terraform log file. Let it complete. Yeah, do you see here? A folder called dot terraform is created automatically. You may check here or else you can also check go to the desktop. This is the folder I have created. See a folder and if you go there providers, HashiCorp, AWS provider, 4.58, Windows. Do you see that's a binary? It was installed. Do you see that? And it was of some size. You have some 3 MB. So yeah, uh, that's a huge file. So that's why Terraform doesn't come with all the providers by default. Depending on the requirement, um, yeah, we can choose the provider here. So let us start with this. Let's start with uh, uh, the provider. I mean, let's start with the code. So. See, one thing is this folder is generated, which is having executable, and then a log file. Do you see the log file, terraform.log? So, if you see the log file, it is having like some information of what providers you have. Log file will give you information of what providers this particular Terraform code is using. You might be using multiple, um, uh, like uh, you might be using multiple providers. All of that information will be present in log file. So these are all important from the point of interview. There might be a question asked that why do you need a log file? What kind of information log file will have? All of that information will be present here. So coming to the um, main.tf. So here if you see provider. Yeah, now okay fine Terraform provider is installed. How, to, how do I connect to my AWS account, right? So all those configuration options comes here, like a region. Um, we want the region, like let's say I want to work on AP South one. You may configure the region. Not only region, you have to connect to that account. So if you just go here, uh, yeah, see, see access key secret key also, you have to provide here. But do you think it's a good practice to provide the access key secret key here? Right, it's not uh, uh, secure. So in that case, it's not secure because later on we are going to place our code in the um, like in our Git. So we can't push this code with the credentials. There. So what you can do, you can also do AWS configure from your terminal and put the access key secret key that way also you can connect. Right. So this is how you can configure. Uh, so all the configurations are done. We can start working on it. Before that, one more thing. Like I want to version control all this code with Git. So let us initialize Git here, Git in it. So this TF becomes local repository. 
all your Terraform code can be version control. So initialize Git. Oh, okay. So Git is started. You can see they are clear. They were all untracked. So let us add and comment. Before adding and comment, what I want is in Terraform, I don't want to um, uh, version control certain files which will have sensitive data, particularly state file, which we just uh, discussed today. This state file. Like state file is automatically generated when you apply the code and state file will have all the sensitive data, isn't it? Which I don't want to put in a GitHub again. So I want to ignore that file from versioning. How to ignore certain files from versioning? We have learned these concepts in the beginning. So there I told you we'll be practically implementing them in our project. So anyone like how do we ignore certain files? I don't, don't want to version control state file. Even this provider, this is an executable. If you see, see, uh, like just if you go here, see that's an executable ex. Do you see? EXEs need not be version control. Also, it's very huge. I don't want to put it on GitHub. So I want to ignore this uh, provider executable. I want to ignore the state files. So how can I ignore them from getting version controlled by Git? Yes. Anyone, how to version control certain files with Git? We have already learned, so can you try answering? Git ignore file, right? We have ignore file. So let's create an ignore file. Don't get ignore. So put all the files, whichever you don't. I created it in a wrong place inside this provider. We have to create it in Terraform directory. Okay, this is where you have to. Terraform. Okay, all the Terraform uh, directory means whatever is present here, this directory should be ignored. And then uh, state files when they are created. For now, let it be this way. Okay, now I will do git status. This Terraform directory should not be version control. Do you see that this directory has become grayed out? It will not be version control. Only git ignore log file main dot here. Fine. So let's add them. Git status, so everything is fine. So git commit minus m tf code terraform code done. So now you can connect your remote and push it. That's how git ignore file can be used. Got it clear, everyone? Any questions in this part from anyone? No, ma'am. Right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and create some EC2 instance. It's very simple creating instances there. Do AWS configure, and we can write some code to create an EC2 instance. So let's do that. Mm -hmm. I have to do AWS configure. I didn't do that before. I'm doing it. Once AWS configure is done, we will be all set to create the instances of provisioning the infrastructure there.
Okay, so yeah, I have done AWS configure. You can do here or else on Git bash also fine uh, so that we don't provide the credentials here. Now let's see how to create an instance. Those are called as resources in AWS. Resources are the one we you create in AWS. See, these are all the different resources available. If you go here for EC2 Elastic Compute Cloud, and here you can see AWS instance. See, provides an EC2 instance resource. This allows instances to be created, updated, and deleted. Means what it does, it eliminates all the manual effort. Means you don't need to go to the AWS console and you don't need to execute all the steps like whatever we were doing till now manually. Because in real time, there might be, you may need 100 servers or else you want to modify all of them. So all of this can be handled. See here. See, this is my code. If you want to create an AWS account, how are we doing it? I mean, if you want to create an instance, you go and click on launch instance. You choose the AMI. See, AMI means Amazon machine image, which type of machine you want. Instance type, you provide some key pair, you provide some security rules, uh, default storage, or else you click on launch, right? So similarly now, to provide an instance, so here is the code. Uh, I'll just uh, start with the basic method of creating it with a simple code. Say this is how. AWS instance, provide some AMI ID, instance type, and create it. Very simple. Okay, so just let me choose a simple code. See, also Terraform is also like this is how you use in real time as well. You can check the resources, what are all things. See, here we are creating instance with the very basic inputs. You could configure it to any level, which we'll do as we go by. So for now, this is the code. You will put, you will create the resources here. Okay. This way. Uh, let's say this is terraform instance okay that's a name see actually the syntax is like let me explain with the syntax resource type of the resource means type of the resource means these are all the types of the resources and the name of the resource you want to give like you want to assign some a name to it right so that's how you give the name of the resource then ami means some Amazon machine image ID. See, if you just go here, whenever you are choosing the AMI, it will have some ID, but till now we were just doing this way. So you need to pick up this ID to use it. See, here comes the ID when you select it. You can copy from here. Okay, this is the AMI ID I would like to use. And I just want t2.micro. You can configure all of this as well, uh, like the keys, the type, uh, security rules, all of this you can configure. We'll start with them slowly. First, I'm giving only these two inputs. If I don't give other input means, it will take the default ones. Also, I would like to put some name, which is called tags. Okay, some name tag. Now let's say I would like to give Terraform instance one right so this should spin up an ec2 instance which is of t2.micro here okay so let's see let's run the code how do you run the code we have already installed the provider now terraform plan first of all run the plan command terraform plan will not create the infrastructure but it will give you inf information of what type of or what inform what infrastructure it will create it's like a dry run see whenever you run terraform plan this is what i'm talking about you can't open it now because it was still in uh, modification see it went away actually state file will be created and here plus indicates these will be created when you apply the code i didn't apply the code i just run the plan command okay sure so i will explain the syntax again uh, let me explain you this flow first so terraform plan command will show you what are all the things that will be created see ami ar and so many things but i have given only ami so it will take that and others will be known after apply means it will use the default values 
instance type i have mentioned rest of the things are known after apply means after creating you will know those values plan one to end and zero to change and zero to destroy means only one instance will be created but has it created actually no because it's just a plan dry run it will give you an idea of what are all the things that will be created okay i didn't run that i will apply that before that let me show you the syntax once again so you don't need to learn line by line like this like i already said i copied this from the documentation this also even this as well only thing is you need to be like you need to practice going through the documentation understand the code and use the code that's all you have to do from here we have used but let me tell you the syntax it first begins with a resource type of the resource and this is name of the resource and then some key key and some values or attributes and some values attributes means some properties or variables set to some values that's all terraform is an like a terraform certification if you go for even that is also a, an open book exam like you can always refer the official documentation so what you have to do is you don't need to write each line like a code each a line by line everything from your end manually from scratch you should be learning or practicing how to use this documentation effectively like i said this terraform documentation is so good you can learn it very easily it will help you implement uh, in your projects uh, with all advanced configurations so you should be able to understand this suppose let's say okay i am using aim i don't know what is this and all see every attribute or arguments you may call them as arguments or attributes or properties they were explain here what is aim i let's say i don't know i am a newbie see it's optional means it's not that mandatory you should set it you can also leave it if you leave it again it will use default one okay required unless launch template is specified and launch template specifies means if you don't specify this aim you you should specify the launch template template means the format which kind of aim you want you could specify the template right so and then if you want to say associated public ip address you can do it you want to mention availability zone you can do that you want to specify anything cpu core count of your instance you can do that with these attributes do you see them so yeah so many attributes explain here they might be changing depending on the versions of terraform terraform is keep on changing like i said it's a new comparative to ansible and other tools so yeah it keep on changing you should be able to read and understand this document you did not read everything depending on your requirement let's say there is a requirement you need to mention your ebs so this is where you can go to right so uh that's how you can now let's apply the code i didn't apply i just run the plan now we'll apply the terraform code like terraform apply yes now code will be applied seen here it was showing these are all will be created do you want to confirm again it asks for confirmation one to add one instance will be created do you want to perform these actions yes i would like to yes for approve right one to add it was still creating it was in a creation state right so i think it was complete you can see here one added so let's see that yes do you see that isn't it it was too good like we followed many manual stuff it has automated but no key because i didn't mention any key 
but yeah it was all uh, instance like we were using till now if you just scroll down it will be using the mi id we have mentioned and other details will be like the default ones maybe because i didn't configure more anything else that's all right instance is created and when instance is created you can see the state file created state file will have all the information of your infrastructure all the including all the sensitive data see here it has created one instance it is in the json it will give you all the information see private ip public ip public ip public dns so many in so much of information right that's this is the terraform life cycle so state file is automatically generated. i don't want to version control this because yeah state file will have ip address everything i don't want to version control it so you can also put that in the git ignore so go here add it so that it will not track okay so it should not see it is also grayed out now fine okay fine i have created an instance let's say i don't want it anymore terraform destroy will destroy the complete infrastructure see it was destroying another file called state backup file is created if you observe see here, whenever you run destroy, it was showing minus. Indicates it will destroy all this infrastructure. It will delete all this infrastructure. Yes, confirm it. State file, state backup file, one more file. Okay, finish. Okay, it will not allow you to open because some changes were happening in the state file now. Yeah, so you know, one is uh, uh, destroyed, one resource got destroyed. State file, if you see, yes. See, this is state file. State file become empty, why? See, state file always corresponds to the, your infrastructure. See, if you refresh, terminated, it's gone. So there's nothing there. So, yes, it is empty. It was showing empty, means, yes, it's all gone. Then one more file is created called state tf state dot backup. What is the state backup? This is also created automatically. State a tf state backup file will have the previous state of the infrastructure. Previous state means yes, I used to have one infra, one EC2 instance with a public IP and also state backup file will have the previous state. Whereas this will have the current state. Right? So this also need not be version control, which will also have the um uh, like the sensitive data or previous statements even it will have all the information right so ignore that also this is the practical implementation of git ignore file don't version control that fine this is the uh, actual cycle like creating the infrastructure destroying the infrastructure terraform plan terraform apply terraform destroy sorry uh, yeah terraform destroy which will de destroy the whole infrastructure if I want to create again, apply. That will create the infrastructure. Okay, so here you can see again the infrastructure coming up. We have added tag, right? This is the name tag. New infrastructure came up, this one. New AC2 instance. And you can check all the information on the Terraform um, from the AWS console. Or else you can also check this way, Terraform. Um, state list. That will list all the infrastructure here. See, one infrastructure. State list. It will list whatever uh, instances were created. Right. Also, 
error from state show that particular resource name. It will show you all the information of it. Like whatever in the state file. In the state file, we may not be able to see all of that properly, right? Here you can see very clearly it has created an AP South 1B and all that ID, the status, everything it can show you show here. Clear everyone understood? Yes. So, yeah, it will be really interesting whatever we have done manually till now. This is only the manual step we were doing till now. Everything we have automated in the pipeline. So, we'll, we'll dig into more details on this. We'll do a lot many things in Terraform. And, yeah. So, once uh, then if you just want it, you can also destroy it. Okay, these are the basics of Terraform, applying, destroying the infrastructure. You can do a lot more. And like I already said, we just configured only AMI and the type. Maybe you can customize, you can configure to any level. Like you may tell which VPC it should use, which subnets it, use, it should use, like how the IP address should be. Like you can configure to any level. If you are not mentioning means it will be using default VPC. If you see here networking, it will be using default VPC zones. What is meant by VPC? What is a subnet? What is a zone? All of these AWS concepts we shall look into tomorrow and we'll create an instance with all of these details, right? So that is what we have to do next. We will go through AWS concepts first tomorrow and then we'll use Terraform to customize those configurations as well. That is the idea. So it was destroyed. So it might have been terminated. Yes. Very simple, right? So Terraform is very important and it is very interesting. Kubernetes Terraform. These have got a lot of importance in the market now. Any questions on this part? Anything else from your end? I'm sorry. So that's all for today. We shall take up from here in the next class. Any questions? All right then, thanks everyone. See you all tomorrow.